There is were there how many births a hospital dealt with in particular. There was dementia data, how well various GPs dealt with dementia patients, how many had a successful, not successful, a uh, diagnosis of dementia and how well they dealt with that. Um, again, al allowing people in London to type in a postcode, search for that data and compare it against various standards. Um, taxonomies, when you think taxonomies, it just lists quite plain, quite boring, but for my health London, it was essential to the success of the site. Um, enhancing taxonomies, we were able to create themed health communities, um, using the, making use of pre-processed functions in the theme. We were able to uh, give each health community its own branding, its own colour theme, its own essence, so it wasn't just plain and boring and the same as every other thing. Um, alongside this, extensive tagging for content, so content would be tagged for a particular target age, a particular CCG, which is a clin clinical commissioning group, so for example Kingston Contents or Lambeth. Um, so we integrated that with uh, Apache Solar Search, so that when people were searching, they can filter it by GP, by dementia related news, by news targeted at 20 to 24 year olds. Um, example of that we've done here. So this is our health community's landing page. And for each of the different health communities, they have their own theme saying. All oh, rather blue infections, that's green. So the, the only difference here is the taxonomy dictates the styling. So I'm quite proud of myself when I get this right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often. <laughs> um, going forward with taxonomies as well, we use them to create lists of the PCTs, which is how GPs are grouped, as well as clinical commissioning groups. So again, um, site admins could go in, update details, edit them if they change in the future, and again, would retain back to, back to the user, so the user could carry on searching, so all that information became up to date through the Drupal CMS rather than having to say, question. Paul, are you working off the back of open data provided by the Department of Health, or was it, was, did you have to negotiate access to this? Did you go by the PCTs? I mean, I, some of the background of this one I'm still very interested yeah. about. Um, the data itself, the general practice outcome, state, outcome standards, was generated as part of the Mayor of London's electoral promise. Okay. The site launched in November 2011. So it's completely open access. Essentially anyone could do a mashup of this if they were yeah, so minded. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I mean, that oh, sorry. Um, all the this... data is also released onto the London Data Store. Okay, so, so you, can the... take, you can take all the data. Right, yeah. it's the, the Colvin Ranger basic project. Yeah, so it's, it's completely open. Yeah. Right, good, thanks. All agreed with the LMCs and the PCTs. And... Okay. Cool. Back this is Jane Barnacle. She's director of patients in London. Is it, so is that the funding body or is it the Department of Health or well, who, who, who you know, basically gave you the wonderful money to do the wonderful stuff? So the money came from the SHA, so the Strategic Health Authority of London. Right, okay. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, I'm sorry, where are you from? I, I'm a random person but I live in Lewisham, so I right. just want to take a bit of interest. Okay. In <laughs> the random person lives in Lewisham? Yeah, they're all random. <laughs> 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 they're very random. <laughs> And we'll be able to be specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, find and compare. It pretty much does what it says in the tin. This was one of the main goals of the site when it was launched, to be able to allow users to find and compare data from across the thing, making that data, as Jane clarified, as open as possible to all types of users. Um, there are a couple of ways it does this. You can either enter your postcode and search within a one free five mile radius for maternity hospitals you can search up to 15 miles away from you for other data it allows you to search by your borough um, from this it generates a result list which you can then select the particular data that interests you and brings up a nice clear service comparison <coughs> I'll take you through a quick show of what that looks like so you'll go through a find and compare your GP, your lenta Select your mile radius, compare your practices, 
and brings you a nice, funky little map. Check the practices you're interested in. Um, services available, so for GPs, this is stuff like extended open hours, um, emergency GP appointments, after hour services. Again, this, this was done through the flag module, which again allowed GP owners to update the information as soon as it becomes available to them, and so we just pull that through automatically. So again, it was all about the data that GPs could update themselves, we wouldn't have to go around cold calling GPs saying, have you got this service yet, have you got this service yet, and then having someone else to update that data, it allowed the GPs themselves to say, yep, we're now opening them after hours for some particular reason. Um, the data itself, nicely represented. This GP is not fantastic, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to talk about them. <laughs> um, but you can, at uh, first glance, you can see your GP, which may be any one of those within your postcode, as well as other GPs, allowing you to switch GPs if you so choose, because another one has better services or another one deals with a particular condition better than your previous GP did. Yeah. And that's perfectly <laughs> um, Going back off the bandit player, we created these things called super maps. Um, they're essentially allowing us to add services, service types, and sub-service types to content within the site and then allow an user to search. Um, the first of this was find out which GPs are online. By online we mean which ones allow uh, online repeat prescription, online booking, and where you can access your medical records online. Um, this is a, was a very top level one. Or not, I did add that one out. <coughs> why, did, why did Marshall Street Leisure Centre just come up? Because that's a gym. Well, oh, that, that that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's the second set of super maps. <laughs> so this is the first super map. So all across London you can see with Wandsworth, 23 practices allow you to book appointments online. And then you can go into each of those uh, CCGs themselves, clinical recognition groups, and find out which ones in particular do that. Um, again, all this is here in the head for, for that map, all the data is pulled from the GP nodes across on the pages. Do you use Google Maps for that map? Or just uh, Google Maps. Okay. Um, yeah, again, all, all that information is pulled from content on the site which GPs can update, so again, it's completely flexible for GPs to make meaning that the data is up to date. Um, for other super maps, we allowed you uh, we obtained data to allow you to search for you know, gyms, swimming pools, alcohol help centres. <laughs> that's what you need to say alcohol. <laughs> just stop there. I, I have to figure the next one. Thanks. I, not, it's not that I've used it. <laughs> find your nearest alcohol. <laughs> find your alcohol. I was trying to figure the name for it, but it didn't occur. The alcohol addiction centre, um, dentist, pharmacies. That kind of thing. An example of that would be so this is a dementia super map, so you can find out about day care set, day centres. I actually have no idea if I've got any data to zoom me. Or if I can enter a valid postcode. No, it's the twelve. I don't think. Yeah, it's the twelve. Yeah. yeah. So I live, I hope it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this allows you to few more details about the service and plan your journey, check your TFL, print it in the music format. But all these super maps, the dementia one, the urgent care and hospitals, pharmacies and healthy living services like gym, use these exact same templates, so we you know, update the template once across the site. All these services are taxonomies, which content can be tagged with, again meaning the people who manage this at NHS London can easily tag additional content, can easily update content when needed. So again, just keeping data up to date, fresh. I, I know you visualised health outcomes with pie charts yes. earlier. 
I'm just wondering whether you thought about, I mean, you might, might have already done this actually, whether you've done it as a sort of heat map on the, just a geographical overlay on London to show, say, frankly, in this borough, is, you know, everyone's dying, you know, early. <laughs> Um, I am, we haven't done it on my whole London. I don't know if it's available elsewhere. Jane it's may coming. be able to. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It is coming apparently. Right. Okay. There we go. So it's quick maybe, maybe. crime mapping, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to snap yeah. it first. Yeah. It's coming for the, the next pieces we're doing. Great. Yeah. That might be fun. Mm -hmm. Could be fun doing it. Yeah. Uh, um, again, all these use the same template. These service types, the taxonomies, which NHS London can add, edit, delete, add to content. Um, the description again, CMS Edit Tool, so it's all about making it as simple as possible using the same template that can just be duplicated, meaning a quick rollout of things. So we, these super maps can be, we started off with one, then took that template and just duplicated it as many times as we needed it for pharmacy, dentist, urgent care, etc. Yes, as I said, it was filtered to users' needs, so users can filter it based on a bar line in some <coughs> cases or the postcode and a mile radius. Um, feeds and API. Um, we have a few feeds and APIs used within this system. The first and one that went live was a two way patient opinion feed. This was integrated with NHS Choices and it allows users to comment on a particular practice. Um, whatever that may be, rate it as whether well how likely you are to recommend it to a friend, and then that would be sent to a NHS Choices, go through their moderation system, and we we'll receive that in a API call back and display it on our site. Um, as I said, we're first in the country to implement that, and so far it's worked out relatively well. Um, all of our care home services and data is an API feed from comparecarehomes.com, so rather than duplicating the data, it's managed. Can compare can to manage it and then we integrate it into our Drupal site. Um, all these facilities and services are the kind of being taken from comparecarehome.com. Um, another recent thing we've done is the lib consultations. Um, things like Dialogue App and Citizen Space are a way for a company to open up ideas and suggestions to the public um, to them. Some of the things we did is give them quick access to local services via uh, the, the super maps on a smaller scale on their profile page, personalised content, so when they register out or at the profile they can tag particular health issues they're interested in, such as dementia, health issues, you know, dementia, young people, sex, and then news events and features will be dragged, will be pulled through onto their profile feed. Um, the, the lib consultations I've just talked about, again, pulled onto their profile feed, so as soon as they log on, they, get, uh, they can see a couple of latest surveys or discussions open to them that they may be interested in. Um, and we also have the Get Involved page, which um, making use of beans and contexts, which by the were fantastic at building for us. Um, we were able... <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's right. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome! <Yeah. laughs> um, we were able to uh, encourage users to see the benefits of what having a profile on My Health London would be like, as well as linking off to their bookmarks, to their bookmark GP, to any events they favourited, as well as any delivered consultations. Again, more getting them involved, giving the patients more of a voice throughout London. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Jane Barnacle again, who will be giving a quick intro about what NSF will be doing. I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm, 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 I'm not a Drupal queen at all. This has been my introduction to Drupal, but um, what I want to talk to you about is just five minutes or so to just um, give you a bit of context about why I think um, the NHS is going to be the place to look now for, for the new big things in kind of digital, because this is the place where it's probably the worst really for using digital is the NHS. It's been so slow if you think about other industry and, and you know how well it's taken off in other industry. It just isn't and yet now the time has come, the time has really really come to the NHS and, and why do I say this? I say this because there's a real real um, moral imperative as well as a financial imperative now. The NHS has to change um, otherwise we know we're predicting in 2020 we're going to have a 40 billion pound problem in the NHS if we don't start to change how we do things. And, if we look at what, what other industry has done, you know, even 
even as far back as thinking in 1998, you know, when Kahoot first introduced um, online banking to, the, to a really, really sceptical UK market. You know, everybody was worried about the idea of online banking. Yet, look now, 15 years now, and you know, 22 million users uh, of online banking. You know, so many of us just take it for granted now that we, we you know, we participate in managing our own, you know, our own transactions. And yet, what you've seen there in terms of, um, of, of GPs doing doing online, you know, we know that you know about two percent offer the medical records online for you to look at. About twenty five percent will allow you to do online prescriptions and bookings. So there's a huge way for us to go, you know. And we haven't got fifteen years. Um, we've got we've got a, a, you know, a real immediacy now. But what's changed? What's really really changed in the NHS is that is it's gone through again another political you know upheaval um, in, in its in its cycle. But I think what's different now is that it's completely opening up in in, in, in its um, in its commitment. It's made two big commitments to its its operating model, and that is transparency and participation. And those are the two principles it wants to work by. Um, and so that means, you know, the transparency is about liberating the data, liberating anonymised data so that we can get that out into the market, you know, for, for, for others to use. Uh, and the example that always interests me from, from kind of outside of NHS is, is probably the weather um, and seeing, you know, what, what America did. You know, American farming used to be so small in tiny little farms that were, you know, catastrophic failures when, when the weather was bad, but, you know, all the crops were, were ruined. And they, they, made a, they came up with a solution, which was probably counterintuitive at the time, but that solution was to, to actually start to release all of the feeds of weather data that they had and make it completely freely available. And that, over time, completely transformed things because lots of um, uh, insurers came into the market and they found ways to make quite modestly priced products out of that free weather data, which then allowed farmers to actually be able to start to plan and predict and they consolidated their farms, they were able to plan and predict and, and ensure themselves against that. And actually now it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a major, ex obviously became a major exporter of, of food. So it completely transformed itself from somewhere that couldn't survive into somewhere that could. And now, you know, the weather derivatives, you know, market is worth about, you know, 3.5 billion. So it's, it's kind of using, and, and why? Because of a, of a simple, brave act of transparency, of saying, let's just get things out and let's see what the market does with it. And that's not really what we've ever done in, you know, in healthcare. Um, and, and so those principles of transparency and participation are the two really, really key things now. And they're about to, about to start to take over. And, and gone now is also the, the big centrally um, procured and, and, and set kind of IT programmes. It's now much more out into, there'll be frameworks, there'll be standards, there has to be in the NHS, there has to be protection around safety. But actually, uh, in, in opening up the market to smaller developers, to smaller innovation, to come in to try and start to um, help us to, to really solve some of the problems. And actually, a load of lots of the, the, the clinicians in the NHS know what the problems are. You know, you ask the cancer nurse with her caseload of cancer patients, she'll tell you, you know, what sort of app would help, what would, what would change this, but, but she hasn't got a clue about coding, she hasn't got a clue about how to start, you know, she doesn't know about open source technology. But you, you marry her up with a developer, so, you know, I see this becoming almost like the e-harmony for bringing together, you know, geeks with the healthcare staff and actually get them together, match them up, right? And you'll start to get the solutions, you know. So we're calling it, and it's being called Code for Health. Um, we haven't got a clue really how to do it yet. So actually, we need your help. You know, we need your help. Uh, and this is something that Leon and I have been, have been chatting quite a bit about, is saying, how do, we, how do we make this concept of Code for Health? How do we make the e-harmony? you know, for, for healthcare workers and, and, and geeks to come together and to match them up and to, 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 to get the community thinking about solutions and ideas for us. How do we, how do, we kind of do that? Uh, and so we don't quite know yet. So, so it's, 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 we, want, we know we need to probably set a bit of a framework, some guidelines, but we don't want to make it over, you know, we want to, we want to keep it fairly, fairly open. But what I'm absolutely confident about is that I think we can probably do that in London. You know, I actually think there's, and, and from, from what I'm understanding, you know, Drupal, uh, the Drupal community seems probably one of the, the best organised communities that there is. Was that a well, well? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think, awesome. you know, I think, was it wasn't awesome. It wasn't awesome. So, you know, I, I just think I, there's a real, real opportunity here um, to do that. Um, uh, I mean, just recently, we've, I've just, uh, just recently seconded a, somebody from the charity Young Minds, uh, a young girl who's got, you know, got a really, you know, a lot of mental health problems that she's been struggling with, never had a job before. 
you know, I brought her into the team. She has been fantastic. She's worked with, with, with Leon. They're building an online community together. She's produced an app, which is being launched soon for young people. She's mapped all the mental health services. She's created an app for young people for the position that she was in, saying, you know, I wish I'd known this. You know, the prospectus never told me this about things that were, you know, in the mental health world, because everything's so locked down and I needed information. So she's created that information, put it into an app, and is working on how she builds that now with an online community. And she's, she's tested it with her community, which is the young people she knows that have mental health problems. All she needed to do was be matched with, with designers and developers to help her put her ideas you know, in, into action. So, so she's a, a, an example of the sort of what we should be doing just a hell of a lot more of, really. Because then those things fly, because you don't really have to do much with them. They're already, they're already a need for them, they've been developed by the people that are going to use them. Um, and we, you know, we brought the 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 the, the, um, the codes in to help her to sort of put that together, and she's learned a lot along the way. So, so that's my pitch for today: is to say, I'm looking for help really in how we drive this sort of next generation, you know, of of, of digital transformation really within within the NHS. Would you consider a micro grants program, or are you expecting essentially to act as a matchmaker for? I don't know, expertise and then for people to go off and monetize these things by themselves. Yeah, so I think I think we we, we there's something about using uh, I guess using that community but they're creating the free code within that. So there's something about you would you know you, that we have there's not masses of money and, and, and what and then you want to some of it will go out to market then. Some of the ideas will then be generated and then you'll test out in the market if you could do that. And there's a big realisation that actually more modular approaches, you know, we're not gonna have such big contracts now. The procurement's gotta change. No, I, you I know. frankly let a thousand flowers bloom would, yeah. would be my very direct yeah. advice on that. And, yeah. and unfortunately nine hundred of those will wills, but nevertheless that's probably a better approach. Than to be blunt, the way the NHS has gone about some of its larger IT projects to date. I'm sorry to be so direct on that. No, one. no, totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 well, so, TFL technology was successful, so it's a more iterative approach. Yeah. Like, um, countdown has been something that's been going on for years rather than this let's fix everything at the start. Mm -hmm. They're just iterating and iterating and iterating, and now they've got really great products out there. Totally, yeah, and I think we've been so stifled by some of the procurement, you know, processes that you can't almost have to try and work out all the problems and put a full spec together, and then, and then actually you don't really know what you want, and then you get caught up with all the sort of, you know, oh, it's, 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 you know, it's, that's what we said you wanted, and that's what we built for you, and then they're like, well, that's not quite what we wanted, and actually if you can have much more of that agile iterative approach, we will, we will get better products, but we just, it's, it's, some of the rules have got to change around how that's done, and that's happening, that's really happening. So, with NHS London not really existing at the end of the month, mm. where's this work going to sit after that? So, so this is part of, and, I, and I've now transitioned into the, 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 uh, the new NHS, it, it's called the NHS Commissioning Board, so that's yeah. part, yeah, so that's, so that's a part, NHS. yeah, so, so it's all one kind of NHS now, and, um, and that's, so, so I work for Tim Kelsey, um, who's National Director for Patients Information, I'm his, I'm his Director for London, um, so he's, he's wanting to, to really now, you know, he's coming from outside in a sense to sort of be quite disruptive, um, and he's sort of being, being allowed to be quite disruptive at the moment in terms of, of pushing these ideas uh, and, and getting, that, you know, getting that going, so you know, the, the, the opportunities here for London I think are quite, quite enormous really. Is the scope for any joined up thinking? I'm just thinking about. I don't. Know, I don't know what the record, frankly, is of the new Open Data Institute, or whether it's worth getting in touch with them and maybe even sourcing mm. some additional support from them. I know they they have a mini incubator program. I think they were describing it as initially. And again, that's going to be. You're going to meet an awful lot of like minds there yeah. to actually help out with these things. I mean, and again, it's you know, free is obviously better than you know, having to spend money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd imagine things are going a little bit further, and also you'd have a broader array of contacts if you were working with them. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, I know the director of the. Open, I do. Yeah, I met him in of Washington. <laughs> so we can. Uh, yeah, it's a very good idea. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you had say, oh, okay, look, I'll, I'll pitch something to you right now. Um, we were talking about weather, uh, photochromatic smog on a hot day in London, more asthma attacks. Yeah. Uh, I think if you go beyond correlation to causation on that one, having a nice little map, so if you take that route, you'll probably get a bit wheezy. Um, that's bound to be useful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay, little. Right idea yeah. above all of us head. Yeah. What do I do next? Yeah. And we know we know when, when the big pollen um, fall yeah. is, we know, we know some of those things. Actually some of this stuff would be fairly Yeah. So fairly aside from Leo nicking that and pretending it was his idea, what, what else can we do to make sure <laughs> that happens? <laughs>
No, you too well. Uh. I mean, seriously, what yeah. next step? What would you recommend them? Aside so, from grabbing a card and bothering you from now until eternity, I mean, what actually would you like? I want. Like I, I want to hear from people coming <coughs> forward, and then we actually have got to figure some of how to organise this. You know, okay. which is actually fairly open in the sense of, you know, we could almost um, start that and define yeah. what the rules of the game. You know, what the rules of the game are, how this could work. Cause it almost gives a chance to try, to try and define a new community. Um, for help around that. Can, um, we, um, can we talk afterwards? Can we? Can we talk afterwards? Certainly, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. Um, okay. I mean, Ian's run some fantastic mashup days that, I mean, I've, you know, basically <laughs> had to tackle to the end of, so I'd, I'd imagine that would be quite a good one to start yeah. with, to yeah. actually get people off. Yeah. yeah, we're definitely. Is it worth mentioning, like, the Fix My Street and My Society guys and what you're doing? And, yeah, because that fits that fits with yeah. your your heat maps bit really. Mm. So so we're developing at the moment. So the, the other the other um, thing that the NHS is looking at is things like uh, Open Three One One, Boston Citizen Connect. So models that have done sort of big sort of crowdsourcing where they've sort of got the citizens of of, of a particular city to sort of help them fix problems. You know, and those were based around the big municipals. So so things like Boston's Citizen Connect was, was based around things like. Um, you know, um, people flagging up on an interactive map where there were potholes, where there was graffiti, where, you know, so it was like treating your kind of citizens as assets, helping you to, to, to identify things um, so, so that they can be fixed, you know. You can track your people that way. Yeah. It's a really easy person on my street, just get Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might solve your NHS problem, but it's probably not the right I think way. he's got two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, so, so, but it's, that, it's that concept that actually, you know, of, of, of the, the, the fixing issues, and there's something translated about that to, to, to help because actually there's no one front door at the moment into, into the NHS. You know we don't have we don't have a single number like three one one that you can you can you can come into where you might want to log things and actually route those quickly to organisations. You know so that they oh, and, and there's the, again it brings in the power of transparency around actually those things are on an interactive map. You can see which providers are have what sort of issues have been raised, what's being fixed. You'll start to see trends and themes. You know. And actually then that goes out almost then to your code for health community because there may be a whole range of things that are constantly happening, people are constantly asking for, yeah. and no one knows how to fix it. Actually, there may be the, the answer may be out there in, in, you know, uh, in a community getting together to, sort of, to, to work around that. So, so these are some of the things that we're developing. So my society is working with us at the moment to develop a, a very quick prototype. So we made it the things around, you know, fix my street, fix my transport. Um, so they're helping us to do a bit of modelling around how that could look, um, and then it's going to be it's going to be iterative. You know, we will take we can take what they develop, we can go back out again and say who can help us improve this, who can help us develop this more. How do we start to make this into into something that and it brings the NHS out. You know, it brings the kind of you know the you have kind of uh, patient liaison teams in hospitals that are kind of hidden at the back of hospitals. Actually, they'll they'll now be live on. You know, they'll be answering saying yes. I've, you know. We pick that up. They'll do the they'll do the discussion with you privately, but they can then log when things are fixed and when they've you know when they what sort of things that what sort of time scale it's taken them. But I also want them a, pl a place where they can actually put out to the community to say these are the things that we can't fix. These are the problems that are recurring. Um, you know, is can anyone help us with these things? Sorry, surprise, surprise me again. Um, <laughs> Random <laughs> answer. Yeah, yeah. Specific questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, there is an awful lot. There are like community health information networks out there already. Um, yeah. I, if I was being critical, and this is very unfair, um, then I'm, I'm wondering where the input is from them in terms of actually visualisation of information on a site such as the one we were discussing. So the maternity data that's just gone up, you know, we worked with the 24 maternity units and just said, you know, we worked with them, they agreed with the, the, the data, we pushed them a bit harder and said these sorts of things should be in the public domain. And so they've, they've, let it, they've let it happen. The latest we've put on there actually this, this week is the emergency standards, so there's a whole load of standards on there around you know, how well people are meeting emergency um, medical and surgical standards, and it tells you how all the hospitals rate, and that's quite, you know, that's, that's quite big stuff. Of, um, but, but actually, it's the way to go. You know, it's, 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 it's why, why bother with FOIs? You might as well just put the data out there. Um, and, then, and then, actually, the, we know, because we know that honourable competition makes people improve. You know, as soon as, as soon as you know that you're not comparing as well, you'll start to ask why, and you'll start to do things about that. So, so we know it has a positive effect. Uh, but yeah, there's there's still oh yeah there's huge yeah there's huge anxiety and like, I still get lots of phone calls saying you cannot do this you can't put my data out there. Well, so my data being my patients or uh, doctors? GPs it's it's mostly it's mostly professional staff data at the moment. Yes, there's nothing there's nothing to, you would never have patient identifiable data. 
Um, but the bigger thing is about participation now as well, is about not just pushing stuff out, but how you actually draw people in to give it their insights, give their feedback, you know, and be much more open about that. The NHS has been terribly, you know, fine out. most companies, you know, accept feedback is good or bad, it's, it's helpful, it's useful. I think we've been quite defensive in the NHS and seeing feedback has always kind of you been must. Sorry, just yeah. quickly, the next session starts in nine minutes, so I'll okay. round up soon, that's all. Sorry. <laughs> Right. Yeah, there is one. Yeah, Marcus. Marcus, yeah. you're up next, right? I am indeed. Yeah. What are you doing, Marcus? Do you want to have one more question, Paul? Um, is there any more questions? Or? No, the uh, timetable is set. Patient opinion trees from the patient's website. No, patient opinion trees from the website. Okay, all right. What happened when you got it right? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. 